Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and Iron Man here from the Block Runner Metazone, Rovi, and Emscrab, and today we bring you some more DMT. Sweet. Not the drug, but digital matter theory. Dude. I can bring you some of that too if you really want negative, to. Negative, negative. <laughs> no, we don't do I'm, that. I'm good with DMT, dude. We don't sling narcotica on this <laughs> channel. <laughs> I guess not, dude. We sling something else of uh, substance, not um, psychoactive. Digital, digital substance. Real digital substance, right? Maybe, Finally. Maybe one day these things can be. Uh, you know, carriers of, uh, I don't know, something of psychedelic nature. <laughs> but I mean, this really. is pretty psychedelic, right? In, in uh, yeah, I guess in the visual sense, these are pretty colorful, <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess. You can get a color high off of some of this art stuff. But nonetheless, okay. <laughs> if you're un completely unfamiliar, we should probably actually, like, preface these videos mm -hmm. with, like, you know, one of those, like, one-minute, two-minute elevator pitches that you're so good at doing, right? It's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like what is DMT, dude? What are non tokens? I mean, I, I could start with like thermodynamics and like See, second law. That's not gonna fit in within the two minute <laughs> time frame. I feel like it's important to understand the second law of thermodynamics to really <laughs> grasp DMT. I totally agree, but not in two minutes. I mean, you could try. No, 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 negative. Okay. That's too much. Okay. No, well, but if this is the first time you're hearing about DMT, it stands for digital matter theory, and it's a thought it's a it's a process to equate fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens to patterns within bitcoin mm. at least the application of dmt within bitcoin yes. of course you can apply dmt to other blockchains yeah uh, absolutely other sorts other sources of data yeah, and other utilizations of that data and it doesn't necessarily have to be some sort of uh parameter set for token supply right that that is the yeah. confined purpose of non-arbitrary tokens right? but, but i feel like there's a unique application on bitcoin because of its network effect how important bitcoin is the amount of energy input that it has you know done on blockchain yeah so to me all those are like value points of why you would want bitcoin to be your dmt like chain of to chain of choice yeah your source data so, yeah you uh, your substrate layer that's right if you will to create real digital substance you would want to you want to root those um that digital asset or digital creation mechanism to something as closely aligned to i guess the value of of, of energy in our universe yeah. right like bitcoin is the closest uh parallel that we've created up until this point in the virtual sense yeah. in the digital sense it's the biggest network it's the hardest data layer known to humanity yeah it's, it's the real form of like digital gold Right. It's better than gold. Yeah, it's tamper proof. It's all the things you would want and you would expect. Like when, if you're creating anything of, of substance, uh, you want it to be as uncorruptible, un Agreed. unmalleable, right? It has to be, abide by s some sort of semblance of laws and, you know, non-arbitrary parameters, similar to like, you know, the, the, di the physical substance of our universe. Mm -hmm. They're very non-arbitrarily, you know, produced. And like, yeah, we are in our physical reality. We're subjected to them being part of our like ecosystem and we derive value from this stuff. We build economies out of these mm -hmm. commodities and such and yada, yada, yada. So the thesis goes pretty deep yeah. <laughs> into why digital matter theory is important and how it applies to the metaverse landscape and beyond and all this stuff. So that yeah. is the sector we've kind of been exploring over the last four to five months. And, uh, and yeah, this, so let's, let's dive in, dude. What's happening? Yeah, so we're looking at Magic Eden right now, and we're looking at NatCats, the flagship UNAT project on DMT. And uh, so we have a price here. What, what is that point? Roughly 0.04. Mm -hmm. And over, dude, 3,300 owners. Yeah, if you don't know about the origins of NatCats, it was, I think, um, just like everything else, it was a free, fair distribution. It came, nobody really expected it to come out, but when it did, it was kind of subjected to that whole, like, you know, very low concentration holder count. So, like, the big question mark with in the space was, like, you know, is that going to, like, properly distribute over time? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the spectrum and scope of that is somewhere between three to 4,000 holders for your typical 10K PFP project. But remember, this has an 8,000 non-arbitrary supply. That's right, 8,060 or something like that. Yeah, so then you know, I think we're at that point. Like, this is a pretty well-distributed collector base for this uh, non-arbitrary collection. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are UNATs, unique non-arbitrary tokens. So yeah, the the non-arbitrary token space comes with a dual token yeah. uh, dichotomy, right? You got fungible and non-fungible assets. So yeah, we're so, gonna speak on that later. Yeah, so you can whenever you deploy a non-arbitrary token, you have to decide to deploy an art with it. 
And if you do, you are deploying two tokens, the unique non-arbitrary token and the non-arbitrary token, a fungible and a non-fungible. Um, you can you can launch a, D a DMT token without the art, and it's just a non-arbitrary token, um, and it's straight fungible, right? But yeah, that comes for you, you, like you know, depending on the application of that token. Like if you want to build something more aligned to, to DeFi or some sort of like DAO, DAO governance utility, then yeah, uh, I would imagine that deployer would not have art in mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I man, we're looking at these cats and we're saying that they're, you know, using DMT, but what does that really mean? Like what, what do these cats represent? Mm. They represent data on Bitcoin, right? So well, specifically like the, the traits and characteristics that make up the cat. Yeah. 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 So all these are completely unique and they, they exist based off of a pattern found within Bitcoin. And that's why these are, um, not considered non-arbitrary tokens and also considered built by Bitcoin or built from Bitcoin. Yeah. If you've been seeing like the, the catchphrase, like, you know, out there on Twitter, like Bitcoin made this. Yeah. That kind of explains the reasoning behind it. It's, uh, you know, because this is a forever living asset, meaning like in the future, whatever pattern that is determining, ex determining the existence of these cats, mm -hmm. it could reoccur. Maybe it's next week, next month, 10 years from now, who knows? But when that happens, the founder, EV, he could be dead or alive. Hopefully he's alive because <laughs> we like him. Yeah. He had a, we had a great interview with him like a week ago. Definitely go check that out. It's in our channel. But yeah, cause, you know, knock on wood, you know, he could get sniped by, uh, you know, some Russian some, sniper yeah. <laughs> or something out there. I don't know. Maybe he's like a fucking CIA. Right. Undercover. <laughs> so uh, into that outlandish scenario. Yeah. These cats, well, these will, cats still, will still propagate. That's right. They'll still produce. Indefinitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, yeah their pattern e could EV is not a spy. I just made that up. He could be. <laughs> he could be. We all could be. It's a low probability though. Yeah. All right, moving on. We got a tweet here and it is by Daltajar. Mm -hmm. So it says, uh, with the release of digital matter theory, things are getting crazy in the ordinal side. However, it's still in the early stages. It might be good time to hop in. So then it gives an explanation on bitmaps and natcats. Pretty much what we just did. Yeah. But here's like a nice comprehensive list of I guess notable collections that are also developing in the space. So yeah, this is included just so you guys want to do your own due diligence. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard right now in this, these early dates to kind of get like the optics fully scoped in laser view of like what's actually being built in the DMT ecosystem. A lot of that is our fault because we haven't like completed mscribe interface to kind of like really, mm -hmm. you know, package everything together in a nice, neat, viewable format. Right. And nobody else has either. So these things will come to fruition over time. And mm -hmm. it's going to be way more obvious. Everybody's going to know. It's like, you want to see what's cooking in the DMT space, you know, go to that source and they're going to have it nicely displayed for you. Yeah. So up until now, you know, we have to refer to people in the know. Yeah, the final tweet here talks about King Punk Ape. And so we're working with this artist and we're going to be deploying a kind of what we call a fair and balanced uh, distribution method. Yeah. Before we had a fair and open Correct. distribution. And it was basically co-opted <coughs> by a few indivi individuals, bots, yeah. who basically launched tokens and they would inscribe all the tokens to themselves. And, Correct. Um, and it resulted in like a low holder count for yeah, each of the uh, supplies. Concentration. Yeah. Which is, again, like that's how NatCats started out. But NatCats has the Providence Association being like first. Mm -hmm. So they were able to kind of like, you know, brute force past that uh, that ecosystem hindrance. Yeah. But yeah, so this new mechanism here is like just directly counter that, right? Like these projects are going to deploy out the gate. Correct. Yeah. So this is going to be using the, the balance method, which allows the creators to decide how much price that they want to sell each mint. It could be free if they decided to do that. Um, how many max mints per wallet, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, if you want to do a whitelist, you could do a whitelist as well. Yeah, and, like, the extendability of that, like, um, that logic is pretty, it can be as vast as you, you make it to be, right? Yeah, like, you could have, you, you could do your launch in multiple phases. Uh, you could do 10 phases or you could do one phase. It's up to you. Yeah, and, yeah, we're envisioning a future where, like, there's an interplay here with bitmaps and stuff. Once there's more, like, game environments deployed, we're going to demonstrate that down the line at some point too, where, you know, 
let's let's introduce some gamification like for reals yeah <laughs> for like the process of qualifying for some of these mint dishes yeah one right? phase could be like let's jump on uh, onto a bitmap and play this game and if you're in yeah. the top leaderboard you get access to mint one of these tokens for free exactly so that's that's what i mean by like the extensibility of like the logic behind the um you know qualifications in these these mint phases and stuff like that and all yeah. that is enabled or it's possible because of of tap right yeah, and uh, speaking of King, so they announced the prices for each of these um, um, art pieces, mm -hmm. and there's going to be multiple phases, uh, up to four here. So phase one is if you hold a Bitcoin, Bitcoin Babby, Babby. Yeah. then you can mint for 0 0.005, and then phase two, I think it's uh, two rares or one rare from art from people. Mm -hmm. and plus Nat Cat Minters. Plus Nat Cat Minters. And then we have a phase three community whitelist, first come, first serve. And then for public, um, it's going to be at this price, 0 0.0012. So these are completely reasonable prices. Yeah, that's been the reaction and feedback from the community. It's like, damn, you know, we've seen quite the spectrum of like, you know, uh, of ordinal like art projects, you know, free and open all the way from like puppets and gnat cats and stuff like that mm -hmm. to the very far end of the spectrum, which is like very not free and yeah. open <laughs> which are like allocated to some of like the biggest well communities in the space at like some of the highest like uh you know out the gates go to market valuations we've seen you know right. quantum cats node monkeys things like that right and uh, they're all still like you know in the same relevancy sure. space you know yeah they just tap into different markets right 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 so i mean the, the market has to be that broad and that diverse right you can't have everything just be like under one model right mm -hmm. so that's that's why we're doing this just to introduce uh, or bring dmt space into that like you know that infinite spectrum of like how you you get to determine how you want to you know um launch your ecosystem mm -hmm. as a project founder here so yeah that's what these tools are about so yeah king uh, i think we don't have an official launch date yet but man yeah it's it's quite the uh yeah this, technical effort yeah right? this is the first time that you can mint based off like these parameters because typically what happens is a creator would uh, design an art project, would mint all 10K to themselves. Yeah. And then they would create PSBTs as partially signed Bitcoin transaction. That's mm -hmm. how you're able to trade these things. Okay. Um, create these PSBTs, list them on market on a marketplace like Magic Eden. Yeah. And then Magic Eden would do a quote unquote launch. Launch pad. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then, and then from there, you'd be able to, to decide what the price is and blah, blah, blah. So this is in reverse. Mm. A creator doesn't have to mint anything, mm. right? They just have to create the art mm -hmm. and uh, do it uh, using DMT. So pick patterns on Bitcoin and create, you know, something like what King has. Let's see if there's some images here. Uh, <coughs> if I go back here, those are some examples. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you design the art and then you just um, create the parameters of your phases. And then all of a sudden the people mint uh, the creations instead of it already being minted. Yeah. People mint them. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so that's the difference. <sighs> yeah. So there's a lot that's going into this, but again, this is the first collection who's going to utilize this uh, process, but uh, there's going to be many more to follow. It's going to be an indefinite part of like the, uh, the DMT ecosystem. Yeah, so these are just some examples of the art, and uh, there's like one rare trait here. Uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of these. Um, yeah, King was gracious enough to give us like sneak peeks. Yeah, at some of this stuff, and there's some pretty awesome like rare. Uh, yeah, there's as tons of right of, now. They're they're redacteds, right? Yeah, th these are t there are tons of like different traits that we've seen. I know, and this yeah. is like not even a tenth of it. Yeah, so it makes sense why the creators want this, right? People who who actually put in a lot of effort into their collection, they don't want to see it getting like like you said, co-opted by yeah nefarious forces who are trying to like you know hyper localize their ownership of this this asset base. So, so yeah, this is a very necessary addition, and we're very close to rolling this out. I would say a week, if not a couple of weeks, hopefully before the happening. That's the goal. That's right. That's right. But we'll see, dude. There's a lot of development. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, speaking of development, developments here by Terabits. So yeah, we talked about them yesterday and we're going to talk about them again today because like we said yesterday, these guys, they're continually cooking stuff, dude. And, uh, as of right now, this is our DMT champion in the root space. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have future Terabits and we have burn runes to claim individual land upgrades. Oh, that's interesting. You're talking about dynamic. Yeah. Land here, so dude. not only that, like functionality and it's deflationary. So, mm. 
so we have a DAO system, uh, Rune wh Whale rewards. Mm. So this is interesting. We're talking about already applying like some u semblance of utilities mm -hmm. to some Rune tokens before they even exist. That's right. It's about time, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, conquer the seas. So although Terra boats, it gave an amazing thirty-five percent boost uh, to your wallets over Rune holding. We don't stop there. Three D interoperability opens up a whole new world. And that world is bitmapped. Hmm. Metaverse, anyone? Dude. Anyone? I've heard of that. That's I've heard awesome. of bitmap. Yeah, right. So, yeah, there's a bitmap interplay here as well for those people wondering, like, WTF. It's like, what about the bitmap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in the future, bitmaps, you know, once things like block drops are <laughs> finally activated and such, and, uh, yeah. you know, probably a couple of other technical infrastructure pieces, bitmap interplay into the runes economy is probably going to kick in in overdrive. But we're not there yet. Yeah, correct. Yes, you know, so, but nonetheless. Uh, All right, we got another creator here, Grok42. Um, so this is a DMT uh, tap project specified on a sub protocol. And if we look here, they are picking a pattern within the Bitcoin address. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and that pattern is Grok. So if you look at some of these addresses here, we have, what does that say? Grok. There's a Grok. And where's another one here? There's a Grok. To the left, to the left, to the left, right there. Oh, yeah, Grok. There's another Grok. Yeah, right another there. one. They stand out pretty well. Yeah, and... Hence, patterns, yeah, right? Human right. beings are really good at that. It's like, if you know what you're looking for, for whatever reason, our brains are just really good. You're just like, there it is. Yeah, there and is. Uh, the, what's interesting in the Bitcoin address, it, it covers the entire alphabetic, like, uh, range. Yeah. And it's different than a hexadecimal, which is only A, B, C, D, E, and F. Yeah, so this introduces like a whole new vector of of experimentation, right? Like yeah. trying to find now we could potentially find probably not like the block runner. It's probably too long. That's way. There's too no long. fucking way. There's like a, if there the, is, <laughs> it's a grail. The uh, grailest of the grailest grail. of grails, dude. Can we find a the block? I'm pretty sure we could find TBR. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have said that. God damn it! Why'd you say <laughs> that? Now someone's gonna like claim it. Well, we'll have to see if we can do that first. <laughs> But yeah, but in this case, there's 409 occurrences of that pattern within these two fields. Now, why they pick these two fields, I'm not sure. Hmm. But uh, or these two uh, block ranges, I should say, the grokkening. Nice. So there's got to be some sort of like explanation for that. Yeah, but there's a lot of noise coming from this community, nonetheless. And if you don't know, Soul is leading the charge. Shout out Soul. He's yep. a, like a true believer in this whole DNT stuff. Uh, you know, early ordinals contributor and such. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's just quickly run through like what is the uh, purpose behind this project right here. So we'll be the first unit to use Bitcoin addresses as block data pattern uh, recognition source. Currently unsupported by DMT and NAP, but Grok Forty Two as a DMT sub protocol will introduce this data to the DMT ecosystem. Why? Using Bitcoin addresses in transactions enables hybrid system, which goes back to the original t tweet here. Hmm. So that's cool. Hybrid systems. So this is good. This is what I've been wanting to see is like s some new flavoring additions to, uh, you know, this DMT space. Cause yeah, I mean, that is going to be what pushes the, the overall, like the, the ball forward for the entire ecosystem, right? Is people experimenting, mm -hmm. coming up with new innovations and new applications and such, uh, just to kind of like keep the, the momentum rolling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. Sh yeah. We're in full support of this and, uh, we'll have more details down the line once it, you know, develops further. Yeah, and if you want a ground zero for all DMT and NAT tokens, uh, visit Mscribe and click on the NATS page, and then you'll see everything that's been happening. There's 411 tokens. Mm. And as you can see here, the only the only uh, field that's being indexed right now is field 11, which is the bits field. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple more are coming pretty soon, but uh, you can see all the latest stuff being described here. Mm. Yeah, let's just quickly take a look at the all section, I guess, just to kind of... Oh. Remember, there's two tabs here. So this is that was a li the view of like the latest the tokens latest. that were being deployed. Yep, that's always you know something to keep your eyes on, see if uh, something's minting quickly or not. Like for example, NatCats two has 177 holders. So yeah, it's it has some sort of attention happening there. But this is like these are like the OGs. That's right. We have the DMT Nat, uh, Damn. DMT Bit, twenty one thousand five hundred holders. Yeah. So that was literally the first. Uh, the hell. The first DMT asset ever deployed. That's way a lot back, of holders. Way dude. back in November. That's a lot of holders, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of holders. So, but there's a lot of projects here. Most of these are UNAT deployments because remember, UNAT collections do come with their fungible token counterparts. Correct. Yeah, you can see NatCats here, very famous here. 
So that's a good segue into like what we want to talk about next because we're kind of running out yeah. of time, but we still have some really important things to talk about. All right. It's the interplay between non-fungible and mm. fungible assets. Okay, okay. Right. So let me read this tweet. Leonidas, the node monks, founder are getting pissed because they didn't get to do a 20% allocation Dutch auction for node, the fungible token. Yeah. Is top-notch entertainment on my timeline. Lo, 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 lo. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the hilarious event. But, I mean, okay, so let's see what Node, how they respond. All right. They say, well, we are unbothered and simply want to protect people from the pump and dumps that garner trust by pretending to be us. Mm. Uh, founder reserve is 10%, which none have been sold or moved. Send nodes. No, node monkeys. Send and then right nodes. underneath this, we got puppets chiming in. It's like, you know, same, same shit with yeah. us, dude. Yeah, somebody is launching. Yeah, someone launched a token in our name, too. Right. So it's like, clearly, this is, this is a pandemic. Dude. This is an issue, right? Where it's like, you know, you got these non-fungible collections that have founders. You know, they're not they're not rooted in, like, the fungible token space. They're not there thinking, like, how do I create the next memetic yeah. uh, fungible token? You know, but, but people, this is a free and open market, right? So they, yeah. they get to just, anybody can leverage these tools to kind of piggyback on the notoriety and, yeah. Provenance of a non fungible collection Correct. outside of the permission or provisions, if there are any, for the, the deployer themselves. Right. So, what, why is that important? I mean, it, it depends. It, it's it's case specific, mm -hmm. you know, whether an ecosystem wants to support like uh, an organic grassroots movement or not, mm. or if they want like a little bit more control over like what fungible tokens means in their ecosystem. Well, I feel like if you are buying into an ecosystem like node monkeys or, you know, pick your, pick your, uh, picture project, right. You, and they want to, maybe they, in the future, they want to launch a fungible token. Well, it has to come from the source. It can't come from like yeah. the ether. Right. Because I mean, it, yeah, it, it can, it can't but again, but, but it introduces that, confusion i guess yeah it does and then yeah a potential vector of of attack for the market participants specifically right now people that's right whether these like end up being successful like synergistic things that happen between like the community forms a fungible token of value yeah a founder forms a non-fungible asset of value and, like somehow we can interplay down the line and for sure it's beautiful yeah it, it can absolutely work Right. Yeah, but then that, that opens like a vector of like, you know, we're doing that too. And then uh, rugged. Right. Shit like that. That's right. right? That's right. There's dangers to that as well. So, you know, I think that's a good segue into like, you know, this stuff is built into the uh, the DMT framework, right? Like you have the yeah the ability to kind of like um, generate these two assets at the same point in time. Yeah, there was uh, I was DMing with a with a person asking me about the interplay between a fungible token for Nats and a unique non arbitrary token, which is the non fungible. <laughs> Correct. Which this is like the most undertapped, I think, aspect of the ecosystem, right? Because I mean, we're seeing it work now outside of the scope of DMT. We're like pups is a very attractive collection. We're talking half a billion dollar in market value. Mm -hmm. So let's just launch a fungible token with the same like notoriety. Call it pups. And it's 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 catching up. Yeah. It's almost neck and neck as far as like the market appreciation of value of that. So it's like that's interesting. If you go refer to the DMT space, look at NatCat. So you're sitting around thirty million or so, and then like the fungible token counterpart that was genesis or synthesized. That's a good point. At the very exact point in time is like three hundred thousand or something. There's quite the market discrepancy between yeah. these two asset classes because it's not well understood. Yeah, that's a good point, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and then it, this opens up the capability for creators to be creative with what they do with these fungible tokens. Exactly, a thousand percent. And yeah, it, it expands the scope and purpose of like NFTs beyond just like you know visual, cultural building, mm -hmm. community building things. Like now we can actually potentially leverage all the tools of Web three to to make some real value mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Who knows, right? But yeah, that's that's a good point. <sighs> but yeah, we, we're getting some insight from other founders. They're, they're actually experimenting. Um, right mm -hmm. with the fungible and non-fungible tokens Correct. Yeah. for DMT. So hopefully within the next few weeks or so, so, we should have some details around that. Yeah, even us. I mean, we're trying to figure out how to um, to experiment with that as well. It's like how do you how do you like have that interplay between the two assets? Yeah, it's there. It's going to be extracted for sure. Yeah. All right. So we were tagged on like I think we were tagged on this right on an interesting post here. Yeah, I th we were or like like. Somebody pulled in DMT into the discussion here that's happening oh, okay. in a completely random, like, 
Yeah, so this Big is a random, random tweet, and let me read it. So there are 118 known elements in the periodic table. Most of these elements were discovered over centuries, whose others were naturally created by nuclear fusion in the core of stars. These elements are the building blocks of matter or life itself. Yeah. What if Bitcoin is the 119th element to have been discovered, brought into being brought into being by a fusion of technologies, digital, digital stars, adding yet another dimension to matter or life itself. Hmm. Does that sound crazy? If so, let's discuss on a live session. Yeah. So, I mean, this is not anything new to us. We've been exploring this uh, mm -hmm. physical and digital, uh, these parallels uh, as far as like physics interplay between like the digital manifestation between these two existence layers, right? We've mm -hmm. been talking about that. That is like one of the more... That was a, one of the main motivators of why, we like, you know, we just had to, yeah, work on this, right? Yeah, I mean, um, there's a there's a video that sort of talks about element zero being like Bitcoin essentially, mm -hmm. and it ex it uses physics to explain like the, uh, I guess, the application of physical like nature with injecting in energy into a system yeah. like like a Bitcoin. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, all that stuff has been there for years, but mm -hmm. now I think people are are starting to really consider it seriously. It and they're seems. contemplating. So a lot of people aren't aware of, you know, DMT. So that's why we got pulled into this discussion is like, hey, uh, you guys are interested in this topic. You know, it's actually being executed in real time through digital matter theory. So it's something, you know, you should be exploring. So, yeah, if you're in the camp of you want to see Bitcoin utilized as much more than just like a... yeah. You know, a data layer provision for like the facilitation of transacting mm -hmm. on Earth uh, among human beings. If you want to see that like transform into something of more of like a creation engine that is more that is rooted to the underpinned value of the energy being sourced within mm -hmm. that network, mm -hmm. that is the whole premise of digital matter theory. That's right, right. and it's being executed in real time and uh, applied. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah, we find that fascinating that the this discussion is starting to like spill into other groups. It is other channels. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's it's it is interesting. Uh, another thing that we were uh, kind of like introduced was Futureverse. They came out with this thing called Unearthing the Material World, and it's uh it's an interesting read. Uh, but to sum it up, it, they're basically trying to tie like material digital material creation with like the potential of interoperability, and if we come up with like a standard for that, then Projects can like source the same material and like use it for interoperability. Right, right, right. And it's interesting is that if you use Bitcoin as the standard, then you could, you know, facilitate that in theory. Yeah. When we read into this, this was literally put out today. So we read this um, document here. It's, it's a good idea and it's definitely something we're, we're always in favor of frameworks and standards, right? That is the thing that we've identified through Bitmap is that is like the missing component to the metaverse so far. Yeah more standards and frameworks, right? Because we've been developing in the metaverse space for years in the absence of that. And it's like we've, we've directly come in contact with a lot of the, the down pitfalls of that, right? Yeah. So in the absence of frameworks, you have a lot of fragmentation and siloation. Yeah. You know, so that's not good for a metaverse economy, right? Correct. You need the direct opposite of that. You need interoperability yeah. and a unified economic system, right? So... Frameworks are going to be important. So this is a good one. This is a feels like a good overlay over what DMT is kind of for. Yeah. You know, so maybe there's some sort of interplay here down the road. I don't know. Something we should need to explore. Yeah. Yeah. So all the links here will be in the description. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for us. If we missed anything in the DMT space, let us know in the, in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.